okay so in this lecture now we will be seeing about analysis of trapezoidal dam in the previous two lectures we have seen about analysis of rectangular dam so in rectangular dam two major forces are acting p and w that is lateral thrust and self weight of dam the resultant force of p and w the resultant force is r now from this r which is acting at point e we have resolved this r into again two components that is p and w so we have found that the horizontal force p it is contributing it is not contributing in generation of stresses at the base so the only force that is generating is w now this w is an eccentric load which is acting on the dam base of the dam hence we are using our traditional concept of finding the stresses at the base with an eccentric load so this load which is acting w the moment produced is w into e then doing the same calculation for sigma max and sigma minimum will get the stresses at base of the stresses at base of the dam now we'll start with the trapezoidal dam that is analysis of trapezoidal dam So this is the base of the trapezoidal dam. The total height of the dam is capital H. The total height of the dam. So there is water which is present up to this level. This is small h. this point is a it is also called as it is also called as heel of the dam heel of the dam and this is called as toe of the dam now due to this water there will be a resultant force which is acting on the dam this will denote with p as well a resultant force the center of the base that means the center point we will denote it with o the top width of the dam the top width of the dam it is denoted by a so this distance is a top width and the bottom width this bottom width this will denote with b try to draw the diagram with a larger scale because there will be many dimensions which we have to give here so this distance is b by 2 ao and ob will also be equal to b by 2 now the centroid of this dam the centroid of this dam it is not present at the o as it was there in case of rectangular dam you can see the centroid and the o they were coinciding okay or we can say they were present on the same line but here it will not be same the centroid will be acting at some another point so this is the centroid here and the centroidal axis is this one now the same things will carry out here also at this point at this point there will be there will be the horizontal force which is acting p and there will be 
one force which is acting in downward direction and this is equal to the self weight of that don forces act hota hai ek hai p ani ek hai w now the resultant of these two forces the resultant of these two forces so this is the resultant now if we extend this line so this will coincide at some point here okay so this is e this point is e so r is acting at this point now we know that the distance oe distance oe it is called as eccentricity this oe is only called as eccentricity now we will also give one name to the distance and that distance is this ob so this point will give the name okay we will give the name as f this point will name it as f now as this is the centroid a centroid hai okay as this is centroid that means we have to denote this dimension by x bar so this distance will denote it with x bar that is the centroid and the remaining distance the remaining distance that is the distance fe so this we will denote it with small x this we will denote it with small x now this much distances we have given now we have to use it and then find out each and every term so now starting from the first one that is lateral thrust so we have seen it in the previous videos if you have not seen the previous videos i request you to see it because this analysis of trapezoidal dam is similar to the rectangular dam so if you watch it properly then this will be very easy to understand so this is equal to half into gamma w into h square and it is also acting at h by 3 from base so the resultant force due to water this is p is equal to half gamma h square now second is second is weight of the dam self weight of the dam so it is equal to unit weight of dam into volume of dam so unit weight of concrete we have to use as we will assume that the dam is made up of concrete so unit weight of concrete multiplied by volume so volume of the trapezoid is equal to half into a plus b into height so this is area multiplied by length how much will take length will take the length as 1 because that was we have assumed we have to consider unit length of the dam for analysis so this calculation will give the value of w so we have got both p and w now now the next thing that we have to start is calculation of calculation of x bar calculation of x bar now for this we'll draw it separately on the next slide x bar is nothing but the centroid of the trapezoidal dam trapezoidal dam se jo hai centroid hai x bar so to understand i am drawing it bigger so this was the shape okay ata baka ha jo hai ha composite shape hai a direct shape nahi hai this is a rectangle triangle it is a combination of rectangle and a triangle so we'll divide this into the two separate shapes now you can see this one is rectangular shape a1 and this is triangular shape a2 so there are two shapes here centroid of shape 1 and centroid of shape 2 aplyala kadaycha hai centroid of the resultant shape or the composite shape ata je kai distances ahe te apan eka line pasna measure karu jela apan manu reference line so from here we are going to measure all the distances so we'll give the values now this is a a a ahe and the total distance is b total bottom width is b so from this what is the value of this distance it is same as rectangular and what will be the remaining distance this will be equal to total distance minus a b minus a. 
we will also give the height to this so the height is capital H okay small h and capital H don't get confused in it small h is the height of water now we are considering the cross section of dam so we have to consider the capital H so how to find the centroid the formula for centroid of composite shape centroid of composite shape x bar it is equal to a1 x1 bar plus a2 x2 bar divided by a1 plus a2 okay what are a1 and a2 area of diagram 1 area of diagram 2 x1 bar is the distance of centroid of the first shape that means this is x1 bar similarly x2 bar is the distance of the centroid of second shape from the reference axis okay x2 bar calculate karta na don't measure it from the triangle base okay we have to measure it from the reference line that's why i have drawn this reference line reference line passes measure karayche sage distances so x1 pan measure kela x2 pan kela so now from this diagram what is the value of x1 bar what is the value of x1 bar centroid ahe so it will divide into two equal parts so it will be equal to a by 2 second what is the value of x2 bar x2 bar is this total distance so total distance sathi aplyala we have to calculate this distance centroid for triangle it is present at a distance of h by 3 from the base so ithe triangle cha h kiti hai b minus a so h by 3 means b minus a by 3 this distance is b minus a by 3 and the remaining distance is a so x2 is a plus b minus a by 3 ela jar calculate kela apan tar we will get it as 2a plus b by 3 so this is the value of x2 bar now substitute these values in this equation you can also calculate a1 and a2 a1 is a into h and a2 is half into half into base into b minus a into height so if you substitute this all you will get the value of x bar you will get the value of x bar as a square plus b square plus ab divided by 3 into a plus b so this is the value of x bar you can just calculate this substitute in this formula you will get the answer now this x bar is the distance from ad it is a distance from ad this is point a and this is d so we have got the value of x bar here x bar ata mait jala aplyala now second is how to find the x value calculation of x so same use varignon's theorem varignon's theorem use karaycha so using that theorem we can write w multiplied by w multiplied by x about point e geto hai apan theek hai same about point e moment about point e so w multiplied by x this is equal to p multiplied by h by 3 so same value x will be equal to p by w into h by 3 e by w into h by 3 so now we have got both the values here now one more value will mark here that is the z value ek ajun value ek mark karu apan z value ata he z manje konti value hai this is the distance from a to e this is the distance from a to e now what is the distance or what is the z value from here z is equal to length of ae and that is equal to x bar plus x z is equal to x bar plus x x bar cha formula bagitla apan x cha apan bagitla if we add this we will get the z value now we have got the z value from the z value from the z value if we subtract the b by 2 from the z value if we subtract the b by 2 what distance we will get we will get this remaining distance and here remaining distance it is nothing but the eccentricity that means eccentricity 
eccentricity E is equal to Z minus B by 2. Z minus B by 2. Okay. Okay. It cuts jahe. This much portion is only different in trapezoidal dam. After this, everything is similar to the rectangular dam. Okay. Same thing now. Baga. This E value we have understood. E value trapezoidal dam sati. Kasa kada hai chate bagit lai apan. Kasa kada hai chate. Z minus B by 2. Z minus B by 2. Then under same goshti rana. Sigma naught will be equal to W divided by A. So W divided by B. Similarly, sigma b will be m by z w e divided by b square by 6. Same formula you will get. Only value that will change is the value of e. Okay. So, this is how we will analyze the trapezoidal dam. Not much questions are asked in the previous year from the analysis of this rectangular dam and trapezoidal dam. But just for your extra information, I have, give, I have given it to you in detail. Okay. In next lecture, we will be solving one problem on rectangular dam and one problem on trapezoidal dam.